the reason I started this channel was I was having trouble figuring out what type of hardware I would need. And I wanted to help others with some benchmarks that showed exactly what you need to use DaVinci Resolve. Well, further, across my YouTube channel, I've had to learn a lot. And one of the things that I've found most important is lighting. That's why I wanted to highlight today for you a very inexpensive lighting solution, and that's the Supon L122T. This lighting solution is important because, one, it's under $30. Second, it has the Sony-style batteries, which you likely have if you've got any other lights. It has a ability to change the intensity of the light as well as the tone of the light. So you can go from 3300 degrees Kelvin all the way up to 5600. That's important when you're in different lighting conditions and you're trying to set up a shot. The most important thing about this light, though there's others like it, I haven't found any that are under $30. My boy D over at DBZN Media showed it off to me, and I've been using it ever since. So if you'd like to check it out, there's a link below. It's an Amazon affiliate link, which kicks me a couple of cents and doesn't cost you extra. Thanks for looking, and enjoy the video. Today I'm using Beta 6 of DaVinci Resolve 16. Looking forward to the final drop. In a new project, I'm adding some footage I've used before. The intent here is to give you some windmills out of Ohio that you can track as we change the speed on footage. The first way I'll show you to change the speed is here on the cut page. To access the speed controls, hit the three button details and then choose speed, which is the speedometer. It gives you a sub-menu here where you're able to adjust the speed relative to 1x, which would be normal speed. I'm at 13 and a half speed now. If you'd like to ease in and ease out, that is slowly ramp into your speed and ramp back down, then you can use the wave lines and you can either ramp up, ramp down, stay constant, or ease in and ease out, which is both the ramp up and the ramp down. Moving to the edit page, we have three ways that we can change the speed. We'll go from simple to complex. The first is to right click on your clip in the timeline and change the clip speed. This is simple and straightforward and you can change the speed to anything that you want. However, you miss the granular controls such as the ease in and ease out we saw back on the cut page. The third way is the retime controls. This provides real time controls directly on top of your clip. You can add a speed point under the playhead at any point you'd like to create a change in speed. You can then drag them forward and backwards to accelerate or decelerate the speed of the clip in between the speed points. You can also hit the drop box and change the speed. The last way to change the speed within the edit page is to right click on the clip and choose retime curve. The retime curve is a visual representation here. In this case of your frames, I'm going to right click and at the very bottom check the box that says retime speed rather than retime frame. Gives you a visual representation here on the red line over time of the speed at this time of this clip. The higher I drag this, you can see the scale changing on the right, the shorter the clip gets because it's running faster. I can drag it back down slowly and you can see it, it's now running at 353 and I go down further and I can get all the way back down to 1x or 100%. What's great about this curve is I have ultimate freedom in setting speed change points. So this speed point right here is currently, uh, looks like it's just a flat dot on a line, but if I were to drag the right side of this up, I can now adjust the speed beyond this point even better, with that point highlighted, I can change the type of speed point. Now it's going to change into a sloped speed point, which means I can use it for an ease in or an ease out very easily. I can change the scale of the height here by hovering over this, holding my left mouse, and sliding back to the right to be able to get it to go faster, and to the left to slow it back down. So now the top, the bottom of this represents a dead stop at 0%, and the top currently is at 1135%, or about 11 and a half times speed. I can scale it up further, and then really speed up this, this footage. And then I'm going to 
put my playhead over the middle of this line and I'm going to zoom in with alt and mouse wheel forward and I'll add another speed point come to this line left click and drag down slow it back down highlight the speed point change it to a sloped speed point use my file handles to adjust the slope of that curve and I'm going to left click and hold to drag this to the right so that it will speed point later. So here we are and we're going to pan up speed point. It's obviously got to cache itself because this is running so much footage so fast and then slow it back down at the end. Really a pretty click, uh, a neat way to change it. It has the most control and it's the one I use the most often because it's visual and it really helps me understand what's going to change in my footage. Now's a good time to subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials like this. Today we've seen four different ways that we can retime a clip in a timeline in DaVinci Resolve. Thanks for watching and have a great day.